I'm talking to Paul Resnick, and he is a professor at the University of Michigan in the School of Information, and his specialty field is reputation systems. What is a reputation system? Uh, a reputation system is something that uh, lets people know something about you and your past history so they can decide whether they want to interact with you. And it really has, it ends up, so you, the classic example is eBay's feedback system. Before you decide to buy from somebody, you go look and say, oh, they've sold 230 items before, and 228 of the people were satisfied, and the other two people seem to be cranks, so I haven't dealt with this person before, but it looks like a pretty safe bet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send him $30 and hope that my item comes. So what sort of research do you do? Are these general reputation systems? I mean, who would use the kind of systems that you're developing? Uh, so I do several kinds of, of, of research in this, in this realm. One is I'm trying to figure out uh, uh, how well they work and in, in what circumstances they work. So for example, uh, I, I did a, uh, an experiment on eBay where we sold match pairs of items uh, under two different identities, one that had a good reputation and the other that was new didn't have a reputation yet, to try to see whether buyers actually were paying attention to this information to decide who to buy from. And sure enough, there was about an 8% difference in revenue. So enough so that you might notice if you were a seller. It might actually create an incentive for you to, to want to have a reputation. So that's the kind of empirical work I've done on do reputations matter, do they, do they work well? And then I do theoretical work on, on how could we make them work even better. So, so does it look like in the future, anyone who wants to sell anything online is going to have to have some kind of online reputation? Well, uh, I think it's more like uh, you'll have some benefit. You'll, people will be more willing to trust you. They might be willing to pay some small price premium uh, to buy from you if you do have a reputation. And if you don't yet, you might have to sort of pay your dues mm -hmm. to, to build it up. Now, there's also a question of who certifies the reputation, who guarantees that the reputation is accurate. Yeah, so uh, you know, one of the things that I was talking about at this conference here today is that, is that uh, as soon as it matters what your reputation is, or is it, as soon as it matters uh, how you're in, what you say, uh, uh, then people are going to start uh, going and trying to manipulate the system. So. Uh, how about if I create a bunch of fake entities and they all say that they bought something from me and all of a sudden it looks like I have a good reputation. So there's kind of, today there's sort of a cat and mouse game that goes on between uh, any, any uh, service that's trying to use information from a lot of people. Like on Amazon, the author's friends telling how wonderful the book was. Exactly. Or worse, just the author pretending to even have some friends, mm -hmm. creating a bunch of new accounts and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and saying, yeah, this, uh, I've never met this guy, but, the, but, but this book changed my life. And of course, it's really just the author again. Do you see the possibility that we might eventually develop sort of a national reputation database where everybody has a reputation? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, mean, I can imagine some of the uses that that could be put to. I mean, is, is there a problem with that? Well, there's, there's two kinds of problems with it. One is, would it be useful? Mm -hmm. And second, would it have some bad side effects? I think mm -hmm. you're sort of referring to the bad side effects, like uh, you, know, you can't get a job unless, you, unless you're in this database, and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, if, you, uh, if you ever did, said something bad about the government, you won't yeah. get to, to, to have a good reputation. Or there's something in your like, life that you would uh, rather not be made public. Or you have, so there, there are also just privacy, mm -hmm. be, because either it's coercing you into a kind of behavior that we don't want, we really shouldn't be coercing people, or just because it's mm -hmm. embarrassing people, we don't want to reveal it. So there, there are those problems. Um, I think there's also a problem with the, the idea that, that um, simply collecting everything that you've done uh, and expecting that to sort of solve all of our issues about who can we trust and, and, and when, I, I don't think... Uh, I don't think that's going to be the way it will play out. I think we'll end up with much more situation-specific reputations. And one of the reasons for it, which is, I was talking about in, 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 the, uh, in the talk I just gave, is that uh, I may be good at some things and not good at other things. 
so the fact that I've built up a reputation as being um, a very good uh, team player on my guild in World of Warcraft doesn't mean that I should be trusted with hundreds of millions of dollars at a hedge fund. Those may be quite different skills. And even if they weren't different skills, if I could build up a sufficient reputation to get control of hundreds of millions do of dollars just by what I could do in some setting where there's no money at stake, that's going to be a possibility for, for manipulation. So one of the ways that we are going to uh, prevent manipulation is that we sort of have to have, it has to be commensurate the value of the setting where you build up a reputation and the damage that you can do mm -hmm. with the reputation. Now, would people have the right to challenge their reputations? Let's say you look at your electronic reputation and you don't think it's a very accurate representation of you. Maybe you could make a case for it, but you think it could be presented better. Can you change your reputation? Uh, again, if, if you think that there's only one representation of me out there mm -hmm. that's my reputation, then, then it's a big problem because the system can't really let me control that mm -hmm. without letting me manipulate it. And on the other hand, I ought to have some control of it because it might be wrong. Is, is there a downside as far as um, maybe nobody's reputation is really good enough for anything? If you knew everything about a person, there would be something that would disqualify them from almost anything. Could this the, be overused? The, the, the problem where uh, you know, people are saying we have for Supreme Court justices that anybody who's actually had an original idea is just in their life is now disqualified from being a potential Supreme Court justice because somebody didn't like that idea. Uh, I, I think actually we're, we're going to find a new equilibrium where, uh, where people are going to expect you to have some more blemishes in your past. And that will say, oh, but look, he's got 20 years and, and, uh, and uh, only one dumb thing he did. That's, that's a pretty good track record. So I think we're, we're used to more of that information, I think, being hidden. And so when we see that there's one, we're used to thinking that that's an indicator that there's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I think we may get used to the idea that actually, no, if there was a whole lot, we'd know about a whole lot of problems. And, and when we see one, we won't assume that there's a pattern of, of malfeasance. So do you think in the future, uh, most people will be using these uh, reputation, re reputation systems so that if you want to take out an auto loan or buy a house or get a job, uh, they're not just going to look at your resume, they're going to uh, get this whole electronic database on you. Yeah. Well, so, again, and I want to take us in, into, away from this notion that's just reputations for, for people mm -hmm. in, in the real world, because those have actually been happening for a while, and we have things like credit history that are being used this way. Uh, there's a whole new set of, of uses for this online where we, where we can't always tell that this identity this avatar that someone's using or the, the pseudonym they're using in the, mm -hmm. in, in, to do reviews on, on Amazon, that, mm -hmm. that really is a particular person. Mm -hmm. And so I think there uh, we're going to end up using these reputation mechanisms as a way of, of dealing with the fact that people may be creating multiple identities and, and we'll be able to have some history of the things that some entity has done even if we haven't tied it to a person. Do you think this will end up having a major uh, difference on the way we relate to each other? Like it will affect human relations with, if you have all this information about somebody. Um, so again, there, there's, there's sort of two levels where this is happening. One, one is the very personal way, and the other is the impersonal. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the, the really major impact is in the impersonal. It's our ability to interact with people we don't know very well and decide whether they're trustworthy. Our ability to aggregate information from a thousand people who are voting on something and, and decide whether they're actually representative of the, of the demographic group that we're trying to get votes from. Mm -hmm. There's also the, the very personal level, mm -hmm. which is you know, a slightly different kind of system where we actually know who we're dealing with, we just don't know their history. And uh, you can actually see that already coming into play around things like you know, checking somebody's Facebook profile before, before you meet them or looking at the company webpage uh, and finding out who the officers are before you, before you go to the interview at the, at the company.